welcome to LifeSpring Church. We hope you enjoy this message. To find out more about LifeSpring Church, head to linktr.ee forward slash LifeSpring UK. Joy to be here this morning. I love Easter. Give me a big shout if you love Easter. That's what, that's what we like to think and that's what we like to say. And of course, I know everyone is excited for celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus rather than chocolate, days off, etc. But it is really exciting to be able to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus this morning because the Jesus we serve, ladies and gentlemen, is alive. He is not dead. If you believe with me he's alive, would you give me a big amen this morning, please? Awesome. That is most of us. We're going to not only celebrate 10 years of our building today, that is exciting, but we're celebrating Jesus Christ this morning. Guys, now do me a favor. I'm, I'm, I'm nosy. If you are here in Life Spring for the first time this morning, can you just give us a wave? I'd just like to know, just for my sake. We're not going to do anything embarrassing. You guys are so welcome. You guys are so welcome. Anyone else here? You guys are welcome. You guys are welcome. You guys are welcome. You guys are welcome. We don't say this tongue-in-cheek. It is a joy to have you with us this morning. So Easter, i got 15 minutes to tell you about Easter, and I'm already on 13.43 to go. So this is going to be quick. We're excited, and we're believing that God is going to do something amazing. But I just want to introduce to you my little boy, Reuben. Reuben, why don't you come here? Because I was going to ask Reuben, what does Easter mean to a five-year-old? So why don't you come here, my darling? Isn't he beautiful like his mother? And father. I mean, um, mainly, his, mainly his mother. But Reuben, I've already told everyone, what, look at everyone and say, tell everyone your name. Reuben. And how old are you, my boy? Five. Um, where do you live? Redden. Good boy. And who's the best football team in the world? Liverpool. Oh, good lad. We've trained him very well. Oh. Those people who are booing will respond to the gospel message at the end of the talk, I think, Reuben. <laughs> Um, and then Reuben, what does Easter mean to you? He is risen. Sorry, say that one more time. He is risen. Amen. And now then, let's be honest. We were up very early this morning, and why was that? Because he died. Oh yeah, he did die, but was it? Did you like the chocolate as well? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you, darling. So, there we go an all-age service, and we got a youngster involved as well. So Easter, what do we think about? Reuben definitely did think about chocolate this morning. Put your hands up in the air if you've eaten chocolate already today. That's the honest ones. I know lots of you are being honest. Or perhaps when we think of Easter, maybe we think of the Easter bunny. Or maybe you guys who go to school or university immediately think of having two weeks off. Or maybe you're like me and you're thinking the U.S. Masters is on four evenings in a row. That's golf for you guys who don't know. Or maybe some of you think of the importance of coming to church. I do it on Christmas and I'll do it at Easter. What do we think when we think of Easter? You see, we celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas, and at Easter we celebrate the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Life Spring Church, I want to remind you for the 100th time this morning that Jesus is alive, and that is why we are celebrating this morning. Because truth be told, guys, is if he wasn't resurrected, we may as well go home now, eat our chocolate, put our bunny ears on, and watch the golf. But what I love about my God, what I love about my Jesus is he is alive. He is not dead. Death has been defeated, and each and every single person in this room can have a relationship with him. What do you guys think of when you hear of the word love? Some of us here may think marriage. I'm very blessed. I've been married for 14 years. I got married at 12 years old. Um, I didn't, by the way, just to clarify that. I got married at 26 years old. 
do the math yourself if you risk it. M maybe we think of marriage. Maybe some of you younger folk, when you hear of the word love, you get all cringy. Maybe some of you think of football, although I can confirm that football is so 2021, we're not interested in football this year. Or perhaps when you think of love, you think of number blocks or bluey. Or maybe that's just Reuben. Or maybe you think about the importance of your family and friends. Perhaps you love English and you think of Romeo and Juliet. Maybe some of you guys have got the songs running around in your head at the moment. It must be love, love, love. You can see why I'm not on this stage, can't you? Or perhaps you got the song, what's love got to do, got to do with it? Well, I'm going to tell you, there you go, that's me done for singing today, you'll be pleased to hear. Yeah, whoa, Jesus is resurrected, woo, James is going to stop singing just as louder, woo. But what has love got to do with it? And I want to tell you this morning, it has everything to do with it. There are so many amazing words, guys, which can describe our God, strong, mighty, protector, victorious, worthy, holy, divine, sacred, just, awesome. All amazing words, and they are amazing, but a word I wanted to use this morning to describe our God is the word love. 1 John 4 verse 7 says this, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So guys, our God is love. That is what the Bible says and that is exactly what we believe. God is love and he loves anyone and everyone. He loves us so much. In actual fact, we read in John 3, verse 16, which I think Pastor Nev alluded to this morning, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Guys, people in this building, people watching online, Jesus died upon the cross, and three days later, he was resurrected. That's why we are celebrating today. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. Now, there are many kids in this room this morning, so I can't show you pictures on the screen of what he's done with us, for us. And obviously, I can't go into too much detail about what Jesus did for us on the cross. But what I can tell you is this Jesus guy who loves you, and he loves you so incredibly much, was battered. He was beaten up. He was bruised. He was whipped. He had a crown of thorns shoved upon his head. He was spat at. He was humiliated. He was so beaten up that in fact, he couldn't even carry his own cross all the way to where he was being crucified, and he was absolutely unrecognizable. Jesus was then nailed upon the cross, and then on that day, he breathed his last and died. Now, if that was the end of the story, that would be pretty sad. It wouldn't be a reason to celebrate today. He would have just been a good man with wonderful teachings, but our God is so much more than that. He was resurrected. He is God and he is alive. We read in Luke 24 verses 1 to 8, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were there wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate Easter today, not because of the bunnies and the chocolate, although we do love the chocolate, but because the tomb is empty. He has risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus has defeated death, and the reason we can all sit or stand or watch online this morning is because we serve a Jesus who is alive, who wants a relationship with us, and loves us regardless of what we have done in our life. Jesus is alive. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm having to whirlwind this. I've got four and a half minutes to go, and I'm about a tenth of the way through the message. And trust me, Pastor Nev likes to keep to a running order. I can promise you that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 9 says this. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, although some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, and last of all to me, as to one abnormally born. Now, guys, this is really, really important because you see in the scriptures, in history, Jesus was seen by people, not only his disciples, although his disciples, after being resurrected. Jesus was seen by over 500 people, it tells us here, after being resurrected. All 11 of the 12 disciples of Jesus were martyred because of their faith. Martyred means being killed for what they believe in, essentially. But I'm, I'm sorry, guys. But you're not going to allow yourself to be killed for something which is untrue. All, by the way, with historical evidence. You see, guys, Jesus overcame death. And he loves you. And he wants you. And he is alive. But what must we do? We want to celebrate Jesus. And this might be your only trip to church of the year. What must we do? Jesus answers in John 14, verse 6. Jesus says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So guys, we must believe this. And we must have faith. Hebrews 11 teaches us, now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and an assurance about what we do not see. Verse 6 tells us, and without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Every one of us in this room has faith. I can promise you that. I can guarantee to you not one person picked up their chair before they sat on there this morning, checked the legs, checked everything was safe and secure, checked that the back when you leant on it wouldn't fall out. No, you picked up, the, you probably just walked down, sat on the chair, leant back, relaxed, and just chilled out because you had faith that the chair was going to be absolutely fine. Guys, we must have faith that Jesus died on the cross and that he was resurrected. And we must choose to believe this. We are having a party today, but we're not having a party to a God who is dead. We're having a party to a God who is alive. And as we choose to believe this, every single one of us, we acknowledge we have sinned. And I can promise you guys, we have all sinned. Even Pastor Nev and Jackie have sinned. All of us have sinned. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned, all have made mistakes, and fallen short of the glory of God. Every single one of us in this room has sinned. But 
we can acknowledge that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is real, that he's the savior of the world, that he died and three years later he was resurrected. When we do that and we confess our sin, we acknowledge that we've made mistakes in our life. We can do this wonderful thing called repent. Repent is when you're walking in this one direction. You might be walking that way saying, I'm living only for money. I'm living for violence. I'm living for crime. It's all about me, 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 me. But when you encounter Jesus, you decide to turn around and say, I'm not living that life anymore. Jesus, I'm living for you. I want to see your name made famous. I want to see your name lifted high. We take a U-turn of the way we were living previously. Acts 3, verse 19 tells us, repent, turn around and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come to the Lord. We choose to live for Jesus. So, when we truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, Charles, I'm not sure if you're around at all, we choose to acknowledge we have messed up or sinned. We choose to repent. We then can be forgiven by Jesus. 1 John 1 verse 9 tells us, If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So when we truly believe this Easter message we're hearing, when we truly live for Jesus, when we truly give our life to Jesus, we acknowledge we've messed up and we have sinned. We ask for forgiveness and we choose to turn away. We are well on the way to spending eternity with Jesus in heaven. Is that not awesome news this morning? Now, please don't hear this wonderful message, and it is wonderful. Jesus did these amazing things. He did die for us. He is alive. He is resurrected. He does want a relationship with us. He does have a plan for us. And you're thinking, man, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. My life is going to be cushy. It's going to be so amazing. It's going to be so easy. I've not said that. Please don't think that's going to be the case. I've not said that. In actual fact, sometimes when you live for Jesus, life can be really super tough. I'm not saying that your relationship with your kids are going to be perfect overnight, that you'll find a husband or a wife next week, that you'll never get ill, that your friends and family members won't have tough times. I'm definitely not telling you that because that isn't true. But what I'm telling you is, is that when you accept Jesus as your personal saviour, when you believe like we're believing this morning that Jesus died, three days later he was resurrected and that he loves us and he wants a plan for us, your life will never be the same again because through every tricky and tough time, you have this Jesus guy who is there for you, who loves you, who's there by your side, who can guide you and just thinks you're absolutely incredible. You see, Jesus is not dead he is alive he came back to life and he wants a relationship with you he loves you so much and he is desperate for you john 3 16 says this we've read it already for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So guys, this Easter Sunday, I want you to enjoy your chocolate and your bunny ears or your chicken ears or whatever you have. I want you to enjoy your family time. I really do. I really want you to enjoy the golf. I really want you to enjoy watching that. But what I want you to understand more than anything else is that Jesus is alive, that Jesus loves you, that he is the son of God, that he did die upon the cross, that three days later he was resurrected, that he's forgiven all our sins when we choose to live for him. Jesus conquered death. The tomb is empty. He is alive and he wants a relationship with you. Don't let those people tell you that the Easter story is just a symbolic story. Absolutely not. The Easter story is real. It is true. It's why we're sat or stood here or watching online because Jesus is real. He is alive and he wants a relationship with you. Just as I close before I stand handing back to Pastor Nev, I'd just love it if people in this room were happy to do so. Let's all just stand and I'd just love to pray together. (coughs) 
Now, I'd love for us all to say this prayer this morning. Whether you said this prayer for the first time or for the millionth time, we're a family here in this building and we're all going to pray it together. So that if you're praying this for the first time, you don't feel awkward or anything like that because we're all praying it together because we're family. What I'd love you to do if you were to feel comfortable is just to hold your hands out in front of you. Now, no one's going to come round and steal your phone, I hope. We've got security in here or anything like that. We're just closing our eyes and holding our hands out because the way I see it is we're about to receive a gift. You can't receive a gift with your hands in your pocket. So we're just holding our hands up because we're about to receive a gift. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a prayer. And if you were to feel comfortable as well, I'd love for you just to repeat the line after line with me. Everyone in this building is going to do the same. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for the things I have done wrong in my life. Please forgive me. I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your Holy Spirit. I now receive that gift. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And just as everyone's eyes are closed, I just want to ask, perhaps you prayed that for the first time and you really meant it with all your heart. Or perhaps you prayed that again and you've really realized that I just need to recommit my life back to Jesus. As people's eyes are closed, I just ask if you did that for the first time or you'd like to recommit your life to Jesus, would you just wave your hand in the air just so I can see? Thank you, thank you. There's two people there. Anyone else want to give their life to Jesus or recommit their life to Jesus? We've got two hands in the middle. Anyone else at the back? Anyone else at the front? Just give us a wave, just as people's eyes are closed this morning. Someone right at the back, I see you. Two people right at the back, I see you. Anyone else? There's four hands gone in the air. Anyone else just for five? Maybe? (laughs) Suddenly want to give their life to Jesus this morning. Just one last time, guys. If you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, just wave your hand in the air to me just so I can see. No one else can see Number two there, number two there, number one at the back there. Another one at the back there, another one right at the back there. Guys, another one just there. Guys, what? The food's not going to get cold, so don't worry about that firstly, all right? Get that out of your mind. The food's going to be there, so, so, so do not worry about the food. This Easter Sunday, we are celebrating 10 years, 100%. But also, we want to celebrate people giving their lives to Jesus this morning. Now, what I want you to do, there's nothing special about this bit of floor at the front. But what I've learned in my walk with Jesus is that sometimes you have to get out your comfort zone right from the word go. Otherwise, we start hiding behind people. And that can be tricky. So what I'd like you to do, if you put your hand in the air, maybe you're a bit shy tap your neighbor perhaps your friend brought you along this morning and I would love for you just to come to the front here Pastor Jackie has just got some free literature we'd love to give you and then we will carry on with our service so so why don't we guys why, why don't we clap as a church and if you were those people who put your hands up in the air why don't you come to the front this very second hands going here and I'm certainly not thinking anything negative of people who didn't come to the front but guys if you'd like to come to the front just as we're chatting to these guys you're welcome to just come now but do us a favor thanks for watching this message we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did to find out more about our church head to linktr.ee forward slash lifespring uk